Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of The People's Platform. We've been discussing uh, many heavy topics during the past few weeks and today we are going to discuss about mental health, uh, especially at a time in Sri Lanka when we can see uh, incidents such as um, girls being killed. I, I think there were many incidents that were reported during the past few weeks uh, where children uh, were abducted, uh, abused, tortured and then murdered. Um, all of these issues really uh, boil down to how our society functions and, and much of how a society functions is, is dictated by the mental health or the level of mental health uh, that the people in that society have. But, however, unfortunately in Sri Lanka, uh, mental health still in certain sections of society tends to be a very taboo subject. Uh, so we are here uh, joined today uh, by Chamalia Hangama. She is a counselling psychologist uh, to shed a little bit of light on, on what's really happening here in Sri Lanka during these very turbulent times. Thank you very much, uh, Chamali, for joining us on our show this evening. Thank you, Sharan, for having me. Uh, so, Shamali, tell me first. Uh, now, we've seen these incidents of, um, well, sad stories that have been coming out during the past few days. Uh, there was this one incident, I think, during uh, just before the show, we were discussing uh, the incident in Gampala, uh, where this girl who left for work, uh, she was randomly, a person saw her on the road, decided that he needs to go and sexually abuse her, she resisted, he did uh, abuse her and then killed her and buried her. Uh, then there was this incident uh, where a girl had gone into um, this uh, hotel, a restaurant, uh, inn of sorts, and then whatever happened inside there happened and later they discovered her dead body along the railway track. Yeah. Uh, so when speaking about these incidents and, and, and really the mental state of these people, uh, what does it really boil down to? I would say, Shalin, um, both of those incidents, one with the girl uh, mm -hmm. where she was killed or um, I don't know whether she suicide, it's still a... It's uh, still a mystery, yeah, yes. Mystery, so. And the other gunplay incident, both, um, what has happened was uh, uh, they were... Now, at the gunplay incident, there was, it was a man or a boy. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, who was looking for pleasure and then on, in the other case also it was about pleasure people mm. were going after pleasure but then uh, once and even in this girl's incident it was said that she has uh, received a, a phone call and then mm. she was uh, anxious about it that was the last things they were talking about mm. so, um, so people I see today that uh, they even when you take the gumpler incident, mm -hmm. so like uh, they rush into pleasure. Uh, what I see is that people uh, lack this uh, holistic uh, feeling about their lives. When you uh, do certain things, you need to know um, what uh, the consequences would be. Mm -hmm. So. You need to plan your life right now. When you say plan your life, it's like not like the plan. We need to plan the whole life. But then each day, we have to give some thought before we do something, hmm. right? So that uh, readiness, people are all, as I say, are all into this instant things. Hmm. So that's the, uh, uh, that is because the society today is now, it's two different uh, uh, society is now in the Gampal incident and the Kalotara, I think, incident, hmm, you know, hmm. take. Um, From do, two classes two of society. Two classes of societies, hmm. to a fragment, yeah. And then uh, what happens is that uh, all these people are uh, frustrated in some way. Hmm. So, uh, why people get frustrated? It doesn't mean that, all the, okay, the high class people, they don't get frustrated or the only the economic class and the, this, uh, uh, this poverty frustrates people, hmm. not like that. So this frustration comes in different, different uh, perspectives of life, hmm. aspects of life. So um, 
what I see here is now because I'm a counseling psych psychologist and when people come and present their cases, mm -hmm. what they uh, present to us is not what they would come and talk to the world or talk with their friends. Mm -hmm. So they um, go into the real de details. Hmm. And then uh, what I see is that those uh, uh, people are too, um, what do you call, uh, uh, occupied with um, all these things that they don't have in their lives, uh, Charlotte. Hmm. Now, uh, people don't value things that they got. So, for instance, now when people come and present their problems, I what I uh, first do is ask to appreciate what they have. Mm. First of all, Shalan, so simple. If you can still see, you have your eyesight, if mm. you can hear, if you can talk, if you can walk. My gosh, what a lot to appreciate. Mm. Start from there. The people think that I don't have this, I don't have that. Hmm. Right, and um, on, I miss, I lack all these things in my life. Hmm. So people see all the negative stuff where they don't uh, simply appreciate what they have got in their lives. Hmm. And uh, also uh, these um, experimental things now, hmm. right, and the new trends, your friends and youth sometimes think that, okay, I, we need to keep up hmm. with hmm the current trends. I So we can't blame the young children, hmm. Shalan. So um, it's the exposure to the media. Hmm. So when I say exposure, where you are exposed? So uh, nowadays, uh, people, this, especially the young generation, Shalan, are exposed to all this kind of um, trending things that you say, this TikTok, uh, creations mm -hmm. and all those different you know things that goes with technology I'm not very good with those mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, then they get exposed only to that side but uh, you need to also be exposed to uh, seeing the depth of life so I don't know how many children read now about life mm -hmm. uh, now when we were young I'm still young. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is disputing that, Chamali. <laughs> <laughs> we were very young, I'd mm -hmm. say. So we used to read. We used to read about life, like stories about uh, these beautiful novels about these different different characters. Mm. So and also uh, we used to watch movies. Even now you have these movies, but I don't know whether uh, this. Uh, children uh, or anybody in that case, they, re they, they uh, grasp the real um, depth or the meaning or the message of these uh, stories. Mm. Now, for instance, I'd say uh, Aquaman, mm -hmm. right? People would say it's like very high VFX and all that. Mm -hmm. They'd see that. They but see the technical aspect Technical of it. aspect and the colorful things and all that, mm. right? But uh, if you take Aquaman, what's the message in it? Mm. There is a very deep message that uh, the movie is trying to uh, give to the society, common society. Mm. Stop polluting the ocean. Mm. Right? So mm. that's the message. But I don't know when I ask uh, people whether, okay, who may who have watched it, what's the meaning? They would think, okay, this happened, that happened, that they will say. Mm. But then those dialogues, if mm. you mm. really concentrate. So those are the things that people need to um, uh, uh, learn to see uh, the behind mm. of the uh, uh, what is going on, not the, not all, not the facets that uh, implies what is the the reality, hmm, hmm. Shalan. Reality has many aspects. Now, Chamal, you, you spoke about, you know, keeping up with the trends and all that. Um, people generally find it very difficult to just keep up with life, especially uh, given the current situation, well, not only here in Sri Lanka, but also across the world. And, and that is why uh, the requirement for, you know, mental health yeah. uh, or, or actually taking care of your mental health mm. and, and, and support systems to help other people take care of their mental health uh, are being um, widely employed in other countries. Uh, I believe even companies in different yes. other countries, uh, they have a designated psychologist yes. that their employees can go and speak to because 
the workload that uh, not only Sri Lankans but people across the world are, are dealing with right now yes. is much, much, much more than people dealt with, say, maybe not too long ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago. Mm. It's, it's, it's progressed or, or increased exponentially over the course of just a few decades. And because of this very reason, people's mental health is deteriorating. Mm. Now, you being a consulting psychologist here in Sri Lanka, a country where speaking about mental health uh, was considered extremely taboo mm. until just a few years ago. Yes. Uh, but now the situation is, is, is developing. It's, it's getting better as it goes along. But however, we're not still there yet. Um, why do you think uh, we're taking so long to accept the fact that we do need um, certain forms of help? It's like taking medicine. When you have a wound, you take medicine mm. uh, physically. If you have a physical wound, you take medicine for that. If you have a mental wound, mm. you go see a counsellor or seek help for that. Why, why is that so taboo in Sri Lanka? I think the government has to take most of the responsibility. Because you take the school syllabus health science. What do you teach? You teach the anatomy, that the blood circulation system, respiratory mm. system. That's mm. it. Where mm. do you teach about uh, mind? Mm. Right? Um, the theories of mind, how mind works, what's the structure of mind. Mm. So, but uh, in 1700s, the world, uh, the Western world, mm -hmm. they started talking about, okay, it's uh, not uh, they f initially they thought mind and body are two different entities mm. but then they developed into looking at the mind how sh how can we see the mind mm. then they developed into uh, structuralism functional uh, functionalism mm. to see how behavior to connect behavior and mind okay. then we ended up in behaviorism now the world so uh, so the world is, and in um, uh, in other countries, mm. when you say health, it's mind and body. Mm. The psychology is a, a part of the uh, syllabus. Mm. But psychology is completely uh, alienated from our school syllabus. Mm. It's only if you need, of, I think, uh, if you select the part in uh, advanced, level. advanced level or uh, then in uh, the uh, your but is that is that even available I, I i remember maybe where i schooled it wasn't available it's not too widely available across no. all schools no that's only for sure. when you come to if you so, uh, select uh, a uh, degree in psychology mm. you, exactly that's how exactly. you would be exposed to psychology that mm. okay you will be confronted that you have a mind mm. right so that is one so um so uh, then, so a doctor, you talk about uh, your physical health and you, mm. uh, you talk about a doctor, people from uh, the beginning, they know about a normal medical doctor mm. that you need a doctor's help if you, uh, if you are living. Mm. As long as you are living, you need that help. Mm. Right? And then now you don't go to a doctor only if you're sick, right? When you are born, you take for these routine checkups and all that kind mm. of stuff, right? Mm. So, um, but when you're a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a counselor, is uh, is not a familiar uh, character. Mm. Now, in a school, if you go and ask, what are your aspirations? What are your ambitions? Well, who do you want to be? I'm a, a doctor. Mm. But still, they would not. Uh, the children are not taught that there are uh, other, you know, uh, specifications uh, mm -hmm. also. So that is one. And then the other thing is, this uh, council especially, uh, are uh, not, uh, the counseling service in Sri Lanka is not regulated. We are not, uh, we don't have a common body to license us. Mm. Now, this is because I've been in the uh, industry for the field for like the past 12, 13 years. And I'm mm -hmm. also the uh, president of the uh, uh, and, uh, uh, leading counselors association. Mm -hmm. because Now, there is no common association. So wherever these uh, uh, courses are being done, they have their own alumni and goes as associations. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are recognized for our practice, mm -hmm. Shalan. But now uh, there are these institutes who would offer six months 
courses sometimes and then give them some qualification because there is no proper uh, licensing system mechanism mm. anybody once you have the certificate they can go and practice as a counselor mm. so that also has damaged the, uh, the credibility the credibility of uh, uh, this counseling and this support, uh, psychological support that people should get. So that is also one reason that people, uh, 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 they, they fear, right? Mm. They don't know where they are going to. Mm. That is also one thing. And on the other hand, this so my, uh, what I believe is because they are not taught about psychology and mind, uh, this is completely alienated thing, so uh, it's natural that it is stigmatized and tabooed, uh, mm. and And then, and if, if a kid has a wound and, and goes and tells their parents or some adult, uh, like, hey, I have a wound, they'll be like, hey, let's go see a doctor. Mm. But if a kid uh, comes and tells their parents or an adult, I'm not feeling too well, I, I don't think my mind is in the right place, mm. they would probably just, you know, give you some small gratification or take you out or ask you to go play or something like that. Nobody recognizes the real value of uh, uh, seeking help yes. when uh, you are not feeling uh, too well, mentally at least. Um, we've discussed quite a lot, uh, but there's still more to discuss. Uh, we will continue this discussion after a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The People's Platform. Elambeno o nama mohon tak alut dia kerana sudu suci kita hitam. Eka tamai wadat muda ram. Dan termuli arah muda le, kan api sah kaca kelati. Eno program mereka kena, seras mereka kena. Kau ego lo kian mereka tawas tawa. Kian api dah alut taram biak kerana. Api pasukan kami hitam nama mohon tak kena. Api te ilang adi eti aja ni mereka na prasne aja kena tamai. Ar paran dewal petak petak tiela. Me paran akal pun petak petak tiela. Api te muna berdi oling api kena gan nato na. Mereka matra dabal dabal ini be. Ratak hati ada hitam no. Di tarap itu ni patangan na wasta waktu. Milih the samaga, ni martaya, irida, ratri dahaya itu ada. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching the People's Platform. Uh, we're in discussion regarding mental health here in Sri Lanka and seeking support for mental health issues. Uh, Chamali, we were, we were discussing why mental health is such a taboo subject in Sri Lanka and it kind of boils down to the lack of education as one of the main reasons, the lack of proper discourse mm. uh, surrounding this subject uh, that is mental health among children, uh, even among adults. Nobody mm. really likes to talk about it. Uh, because and and it can be really traced back to children not being given proper education on this subject that is properly thought in yes. in many other uh, countries around the world uh, but chamali judging by where sri lanka is today right now uh, what can really be done to to create more awareness now you you pointed out to certain issues uh, from among counselors as well you said there is no regulatory body yes. uh, has uh, has any efforts been made to maybe bring this to the attention of the authorities probably the ministry of health uh, what's the progress happening on that front uh, not the ministry of health actually uh, it's been done under the ministry of uh, social well social welfare right, different okay. different okay. names that different different times so uh, how there is because the counseling department is uh, registered or established under the Ministry of Social Welfare, mm -hmm. or whatever it is called now. Uh, so they have been talking about this, trying to get uh, some uh, regulatory mechanism going on since, as I remember, I first uh, ta uh, went to a session in 2012. 2012? 12, yes, and still. That's almost 11 years ago. Exactly. So still it's not been done. So last year also when this, uh, about this gender issue, some uh, a, a person, some lady, she's calling herself a, a psychologist or a counsellor mm. and she started all this, uh, you know, uh, saying that... Uh, uh, it's a mental illness. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> gender, yes, I genders. remember this very yeah. well. So but there and there is no real way to 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 you know to quantify or to say 
that she is a psychologist or is not a psychologist because there is no proper definition, there is no proper standard, there is exactly. no proper recognition. Yes. So at uh, that, that time also it was taken up in the parliament, so a few parliamentarians were talking about it, and but still it again went down. But Shamali, what really is the hold up on that front at least? I mean, let's, let's keep aside this whole thing that mental health is a taboo subject in Sri Lanka. We need to reform the education system, teach children more about mental health and all of that. At least setting up a regulatory framework for counsellors. It's a profession. Yes. Uh, much like the legal profession, uh, medical profession. Yes. It's a profession. And, and there is no requirement to reinvent the wheel. It's not that uh, this is an entirely new subject that no one in the world knows about and we need to innovate and then bring forward this mechanism. No. What usually happens in countries like Sri Lanka and countries in the developing world is we, you know, we take something from a developed country, a system, and, and you know, twerk it a little bit here and there and make it suitable for us. Yeah. Is, is that that impossible in Sri Lanka that it takes over 11 years to do something like that? No, what is necessary is already being done, Sharon. What is needed is a code of conduct. Hmm. Uh, that is what we need. And, and the base qualification base, to, yeah. to be recognized. So the as a qualifications counselor. are there. So what we don't have is a common code of conduct. So there are, I said, these different associations, they yeah. have their own code of conduct. But then who is uh, going to, uh, the, when there's a disciplinary issue. Who is the issue, authority? Who is the authority uh, to inquire about things and, you know, uh, disqualify or uh, revoke their license or whatever. Hmm. Right? So that is what is not happening. Hmm. Uh, so... Um, I don't know why it's not still passed or recognized, uh, implemented actually, because everything is done hmm. by the uh, Ministry of uh, Social Welfare under the uh, the counsellors, hmm. uh, counselling department. It's done. Everything hmm. is there. A lot of us uh, uh, contributed. Hmm. We from the private sector, from the government sector, every from hmm. each and every. So you're saying the legislation is done, the regulations are done, the code of it's conduct is done. It's there. It's just to uh, make it uh, turn it into law. Uh, turn it into Put law. Put it into yes. parliament. Maybe parliament is too busy with other matters these days. For the past eleven years. For the past eleven <laughs> years, I think that's that's what uh, the situation kind of implies. Uh, but uh, Shamali, that needs to be done for sure, like you said, uh, and well, that needs a lot more consultations and I mean, not consultations really, just a political will yes. to get it passed. Mm -hmm. Political will. Um, moving forward from there. Uh, speaking about uh, this seeking mental, uh, I mean, help for uh, mental issues, um, do you see an, an increase among Sri Lankans who are willing to seek help? Because, like we discussed, it was such a taboo subject back in the day. Are people more willing to come forward and, and say, look here, I need help, uh, I'm, I'm suffering mentally? Yes, a lot of people are now willing to, uh, uh, compared to the past year, mm -hmm. decade maybe, because I my practice is now this is the twelfth year. Mm. So when I began, when I started, uh, it was quite low, mm. like because my sample would be really small. But mm. when you take the other, uh, uh, all the counselors in mm. Sri Lanka, yeah, uh, so it has to be an increase. It is an increase mm. because when you say take the DOC 990 or whatever the uh, channeling registration mm -hmm. uh, consultation uh, booking services you would see a whole lot of counsellors registered mm -hmm. so it is an increase so that is good um, but then again uh, uh, you if you take this uh, the corporate sector or the school system mm -hmm. uh, this appointing counsellors and whether their recommendations are being, because counsellors also, they can come up with recommendations, mm, common mm. recommendations, right? But are those being given uh, enough uh, priority? Mm. That is also a problem. <coughs> uh, so because this counsellor's role, uh, maybe in the corporate sector, it's up to a certain extent there, mm. they have recognised it because, you know, this it, it comes under HR and HR is very, so much of uh, powerful. powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, in the corporate sector, yes, maybe. Mm. Uh, but uh, still, even though they, even though they point and uh, uh, point a counsellor, now take these uh, 
large establishments where they have uh, 600,000, 2,000 employees mm -hmm. where they have targets to achieve. So uh, they, they, they release them to go and get the available service. service. Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying it, it, it differs from corporate to corporate and the business that they're in and the line of work that they're in. Is it um, service oriented or production? Yes. So uh, for me, if, I, if you ask, I would say like counsellor is there mostly, <laughs> most of the time maybe. It's just as, uh, you know, we have a counsellor. We have looked at into, looked mm -hmm. into it. So our HR, you know, you can check it. Just to, just to tick a box. Tick a box. Um, well, much was discussed on the program here uh, today. Um, mental health, a subject that cannot be quite discussed in a uh, mere 30 minute program uh, but thank you very much Tamali uh, for coming on our show and and well at least revealing these issues uh, that need to be uh, sorted out uh, at least maybe uh, a code of conduct and, and some authority uh, to regulate counsellors so that uh, the general public in Sri Lanka will have more trust uh, more faith uh, when they uh, consult and they can and, and, and this uh, practice of seeking help for mental issues and the uh, educational reforms and the educational reforms of course uh, the issues that we discussed and, and the possible solutions uh, will probably or most hopefully be implemented in Sri Lanka in the coming years uh, not too far away from today uh, thank you very much once again Shamali for coming on our program and discussing these matters uh, thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in uh, again as well until we meet again take care and God bless